So, I mean, one, one thing for sure, de Blasio, we elected the wrong person to be in office. He is far removed from the situation. He's never understood because he's not in that, on, in that field to understand what we as poor or even low class um, black and brown skinned people who make up the majority of New York He's 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 far removed from it because he he doesn't make ten to fifteen thousand like we do or at, at the uh, for the uh, minimum wage it's a little less than uh, twenty seven thousand a year he can't understand what that um, what we feel like but yet we put him in the platform with that trick that he did um, on uh, towards the end of his campaign he has a black wife and a black kid I mean I would have stood up if I was his if I was his wife I mean I don't know how it feels to be his wife but I know it must feel shitty or whatever but to be used as a poster child. I mean, I would never let him take that role with my child like, if I was him. But whatever, whatever reason they did it for, I know it was to get him elected. And the people, we got to start blaming ourselves for something. Because mm -hmm. usually when things happen, and like dump, as you call him, or mm -hmm. orange man, as I call him, um, when people like that get, in, uh, and get elected, it's because we didn't do our job and vote. So we got to make sure our votes count, people. We got to make sure that we're not complaining after and uh, and taking solace in the complaints that we have. But um, get into your question immediately. A 10-year plan to do something that we've been doing Rikers Island for the past 100 plus years. That's one century. And yet we've gotten no corrective behavior from it. We have no proper mental health and hygiene. We don't even have proper uh, uh, food banks in, in the Department of Corrections. Mm -hmm. These people, which I'm including myself with these people because I was, I was at one point on Rikers as a kid and then at another point working for uh, the Department of Corrections as an adult while Khalif was there. And to have a 10-year plan, it really states that he didn't actually think about it because mm -hmm. we can actually get rid of Rikers in less than 10 years, which I came out with a three-year plan. And realistically, if we think about it, we could do it in three months because yeah. we have jails in New York City already and they're not even half full. Yeah. So you feel like you have a three you have a three year plan already yeah, that. Came out with, yeah. And, and let me ask you in regards to when you was working in corrections and what was the change that led you to the role where you were like, you know what, I'm done with corrections like. I've been there in terms of Rikers and been on this side, and I need to really make this change happen in regards to not only the system, but knowing the system and then working in corrections. What led to the thing, even before Khalif being wrongfully in prison, that may have led to you saying, you know what, I need to really be a, a criminal justice activist and, and a systematically racism activist overall? Well, actually, I, I actually quit, it, uh, quit um, the Department of Corrections. Um, six months into Khalif being there. So I quit when he was there. I only kept the, j I was, I was only there for a year and six months, mm -hmm. a year and a half. And yet, um, from day one, I was always scared. I was, I was always thinking to myself, cause I wasn't there as an officer. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't an officer. I'm in, I, I, I got a, uh, I got my bachelor's in engineering. So I was there as an engineer. Mm -hmm. And every time I walked in those halls, I gotta say, I thought they would recognize me and be like, because I recognize some of the same CEO, the CEOs and captains, the same ones that beat me when I was there in 1997. And so um, I always thought, like, man, these, these people wouldn't recognize me and tell me to leave. Yeah. But that didn't happen. So when Khalif ended up getting arrested, and I was already doing activism before that, because back in 2012, um, I was already fighting for Ban the Box, um, which was a different bill that got passed. Mm -hmm. And so um, I got activated because I was a victim of the system at a young age. And so when Khalif came in, I thought this is my time to leverage my, my position. I let my mother know, God rest my mom, she's no longer here, just so everyone, I'm sure everyone knows and I appreciate like um, your heartfelt, empathetic um, uh, comments on Facebook or on, uh, on any social media or even contacting me uh, personally. My mom was a strong black woman that fought for her kid, uh, or all her kids. But um, when we were on Rikers, we all felt, I mean, when Khalid was on Rikers, we were all on Rikers and we felt hopeless. Going in for a visit, you couldn't even get a visit even though you went through that um, that long ass, uh, excuse me, yeah. um, that long ass wait. 
Yeah, and, um, and I'm telling you, yeah, I know it because my cousin, or having a few cousins, sadly having being incarcerated in Rikers and trying to have family visit. It's, first off, it's hard to travel out there. Yeah. Especially, even if you live in Queens, but it's like hard to travel out there. And then with how, it, it, despite all these years, how a lot of the people, the people that work there are so rude. They so, uh, to, to guests even, who just want to see their loved ones incarcerated is crazy. So uh, just imagine like for, you know, us coming here to visit when like you're inside dealing with it as an engineer there and then as your past childhood having to deal with what you deal with, it's just unfa unfathomable and how crazy a lot of these things are to even envision, you know, overall, you know? I think, I think also what's important to point out that, you know, Rikers as a jail alone, the facade, the, the walls, the floor, did not kill my brother. It is disgusting. It's hard to get to. It's sanction, sanctioned. It's a hellhole to just smell. But all that considered, it didn't teach my brother how to commit suicide. It was the officer's lack for human life, their, the culture of violence on Rikers, the constant um, abuse and neglect from the Department of Mental Health and Hygiene to anybody that's on Rikers because basically you're a nobody. At least that's what they consider, yet we are all citizens, right? So like, yeah. if you live in New York and you, I mean, besides what makes a citizen, because that's even a sham, but um, you're innocent until proven guilty. At least that's, that's what's afforded to a citizen. Yeah. And Khalif and many other kids, adults, women, men, when you're on Rikers, you are afforded that right to be innocent until proven guilty, and yet that's not how it works. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a sham. I mean, justice is supposed to be blind, right? But the reason why she wears a, a, a blindfold is so that there's no peeking when we make our judgment and see that it's a white, a white person or a black person or a, a male or a woman or a transgender. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be blind for a reason of being unbiased and yet she peaks all the time.